Hey guys, Ivan here. So, welcome to another video. We have a couple of very interesting stories, mainly regarding the Mr. Olympia 2022. And we're gonna start with Big Remy being criticized by Steve Weinberger, the head judge, the IFBB Pro League head judge, who pretty much explains why Big Remy did not win or why he placed so low, which is unheard of for a Mr. Olympia to lose the title and to place fifth. Many people were confused why this happened, even some really popular bodybuilding outlets, you guys know who I'm talking about, because Big Remy was obviously quite conditioned, and there is that rule, unwritten rule, that in order to beat the Mr. Olympia, you need to knock him out, and Big Remy was knocked out by four guys. So if his conditioning is good, and he is the heaviest guy on that stage, the biggest guy, what is it that made these judges give him that fifth spot to place him so low? Let's hear what the head judge of the IBB Pro League, the guy that judged Big Ramy on the Mr. Olympia, Steen Weinberger, what he has to say as to why Big Ramy plays this low. A Mr. Olympia that goes from first place to fifth place. Big Steve, what happened with Big Ramy? Oh, uh, that, that was a, very disappointing. His legs were not what they should have been. His back wasn't what he should have been. His condition was off. His body parts were off. And honestly, it did not look like the Rami of 2020. More of the Rami of 2021, just even in worse condition in 2021. He, he came down even worse than 21. All right, so you heard a man. If you guys want to watch the entire podcast, the entire interview, it is on Mr. Olympia TV YouTube channel. But in this video, we're going to focus only on Steve Weinberger talking about Big Ramy. And I have to say, I kind of disagree with Steve Weinberger. I mean, can I disagree with him? He's the head judge. He's the biggest expert in judging bodybuilding shows in the world, I guess. And he said that Big Ramy's conditioning was off. Was it really off though? I don't know about that. I think he was pretty decently conditioned. However, everything else that he said, he was completely right. His body parts were off, there was something wrong with his back, something really wrong with his triceps. There are other things that Steve didn't mention, but I saw them, like his forearms, his calves, his abs were washed out. But I don't think his conditioning was that bad. I think it was worse before 2021, for example. I think he improved on his conditioning, although there were problems with his muscles. I mentioned a couple of them, I forgot to mention his legs, his quads were definitely off, and there were some bumps on his upward loads, I have no idea what those were, injection sites went wrong, I have no idea, but yeah, overall Big Remy had certain issues, and in the next part of this interview, Steve Weinberger is asked if Big Remy's physique faded over the years, was it that 2013 was Big Remy's best and 2022 his worst? Let me show you what he had to say about this. Do you think that the 2013 version of Big Remy was possibly the best of Big Remy? I think 220 was the best Remy and the New York Pro was the second best Remy. But those two were a lot closer to 21 and 22. 21 and 22... We're, we're not the real Rami that we know. I don't know whether he has a back injury or soldier injury, but there's some problem somewhere with him. I don't know what it is, but something's not right. All right, so as you heard, Steve Weinberger saw everything that I saw, and I'm sure most of you saw on that stage, even on the live stream. Uh, Steve Weinberger saw it in person, and that's why he marked him down that low. And I agree with him, the 2020 version of Big Remy is absolute best version of Big Remy. It is the year when he beat both Phil Heath and Brandon Curry. He won that Mr. Olympia. He was in a really good condition. He looked fresh. He looked great. 2021 was decent, but it was not this good. And 2022 was unarguably the worst that we ever saw of Big Remy. And we don't want to see this again. I hope he can make progress, I hope he can work on whatever was the issue with his triceps and his lats and his quads and his calves and his forearms and his lats, oh my god, there is too much to work on, I don't think he can come back from this, but 
Who knows, we'll see next year. He said he's gonna come back next year, but he also said he was gonna do the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing. He didn't do that, he never explained why he didn't do it. So, who knows? Can we take him for his word? Is he a man of his word? I don't know, guys, but if I was a batting man, I would bet on that Big Ramy's career is over, that we'll never see him back on that stage again. There is this new video of Big Ramy at about one week out of Mr. Olympia. Big Ramy posted it, uh, Dennis James filmed it, and it's just Big Ramy going through the poses, the mandatory poses. And I gotta say, at this point, at least in this video, he did look better than he did on that stage. Can you see those bumps on his glutes? Barely. Maybe it's different lighting that uh, lets you see them but I think it looked better, his back also did seem a little bit better, his arms, I mean his biceps looked really massive, but his triceps were down in size even at this point, and his quads, the legs, the shape was a little bit different than before. I think they were down in size, I think they were definitely smaller than before, and I think they lacked the detail that they had a year prior. Now Big Grammy was never really known for crazy leg details, he was known however for the size of those legs, but again the size was down as well. What about his lats? Well here from the front you can't really see that they're lacking, he looks good in all of these poses from the front. Now let's see what he looks like from the back, as you can see the glutes were really shredded, I don't think he ever had glutes this shredded. And I gotta say his back did look a little bit better here than it did on stage, but you can still see it when he does the back double bicep that it's not good, that it's worse than before and it's just not Mr. Olympia worthy back. And I think Dennis James saw this. I think Dennis James realized this. He just didn't want to say anything, but I'm pretty sure he saw it. In the back lat, it's not a problem. He looks great. But in that back double, the lats are gone. However, in this video right here, I do think he looks better than he did on stage. There are some things that went wrong, probably some picking mistakes, but also him injecting whatever he injected in his glutes to make those bumps and uh, him probably pinning his quads in the off-season continuously for years and that way destroying the separation and destroying the overall look of the legs. He was massive, he was big, he was conditioned, but it is those body parts that hurt him, that put him in that fifth place, as Steve Weinberger pretty much explained. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section, make sure to leave that comment. Alright, as I mentioned earlier, there is a major bodybuilding outlet that mistakenly thought Big Remy is winning the Mr. Olympia 2022 easily after the pre-judging. It's Nick Strength and Power, obviously. So a couple of days after the Mr. Olympia, I found this post by Chris Asito, one of the biggest coaches in bodybuilding industry. And I found it pretty funny, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Basically, after the pre-judging of the Mr. Olympia 2022, Nick Strength and Power made a video, you know, analyzing the Mr. Olympia lineup, and he said that Big Remy is winning easily, and that's why he's so far on the side that they're not gonna compare him to anybody else because he's winning that show easily, decisively, which was as far from the truth as possible. I mean, almost, he was almost the last guy in that first callout. Obviously, he was fifth and Nick thought that he was winning easily, decisively, that easily that nobody's gonna compare him to anybody else. Obviously, Nick made a big mistake, a huge mistake. Some would even go as far as to say he embarrassed himself completely, <laughs> but uh, he got a lot of views on this video because he has a ton of subscribers, man. He has so many subscribers, it's crazy. And here is what Chris Asito had to say about Nick's strength and power. He says, congratulations to Hari Chopin and thank the lord, Nick is not a judge. As I say on Heavy Muscle Radio all the time, a big audience doesn't mean you know anything at all about a sport. And then he makes this comparison, and as you can see down below there is my comment as well. So I said what I think, and I think uh, his subscribers are not hardcore bodybuilding fans. Everybody who is actually into bodybuilding knows that he doesn't understand bodybuilding, but he is very good at YouTube, and uh, I believe that, very much so. I think Nick is a great YouTuber, I'm pretty sure he helped a lot of people find bodybuilding, I'm sure he promoted the sport quite a lot, so we should be thankful for that. 
As for me personally, I think I wouldn't have as much views, as much audience if there wasn't for him, if people weren't used to this template of videos, so I definitely took some of his subscribers as well, but I gotta be honest man, Nick Strength and Power doesn't really understand bodybuilding, he was never deep into bodybuilding, he never competed seriously, so he doesn't really know very much, as you can see he thought Big Ramy is winning, which is a huge, huge mistake, an embarrassment for sure, but it is what it is, he will keep making the videos and uh, he's gonna have a lot of views for sure, as I said, most of his audience are not hardcore bodybuilding fans, and I guess he's making good content for those kind of people, and I wish him all success, as you can see right here, the Boston Mass, which is the account of Jose Raymond, he agrees with, uh, with Chris Asito and so does Chris Cormier. So these guys are hardcore bodybuilders and they don't like that Nick is doing so well because he's not really from bodybuilding, but he's putting the work in and of course he's getting the results. If these guys like Chris Asito did a better job on their YouTube channels, including myself, we would have more views, but Nick is very good at it and it makes sense, but I understand these guys, somebody who hasn't really been there and done that and who doesn't obviously know much about bodybuilding is making more money and having more success than the other guys. I get it, but it is what it is, whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next news is something that you might want to hear, it's Nick Walker addressing the question whether he's gonna do the Arnold Classic or not. I'm pretty sure he would be able to win it, I'm pretty sure Harry Chopin and Derek Lansford won't be doing the Arnold Classic, so who could beat Nick Walker really? Maybe a little bit more conditioned Brandon Curry, maybe, but anybody else, I don't think Big Ramy can really come back after all those injuries, I don't think Samson Dauda can improve that much uh, until the Arnold Classic to beat Nick Walker, the others, like Hunter Labrada, like uh, Andrew Jack maybe, or William Bonek, I don't think I can see these guys beating Nick Walker, not this year, not next year, not at the Arnold Classic, so I think it would really make a lot of sense for Nick to go over there and claim that prize money, I mean last time it was like $200,000, which is a lot, and this year it might be even more than that, so you know, that's a lot of money and it is particularly tempting if you are a favorite to win it why let somebody some weak bodybuilder take all that money away from you i don't know anyways let me show you what nick had to say whether he's gonna do the arnold or not um i will not be doing the arnold this year i will be focusing on just olympia taking some downtime and making as much needed improvements as possible no i am not doing the arnold this year so no, Nick Walker is not doing the Arnold Classic for now, for now. I hope he's gonna change his mind, but I see the logic, it does make sense. If he was third at a Mr. Olympia, that means he only needs to jump two places to become the Mr. Olympia, the best bodybuilder in the world. Is that realistic? Can that happen? With having Harry Chopin and Derek Lansford ahead of him, I don't know, it's not very likely, I don't think Nick Walker is gonna win the Mr. Olympia next year, he does not have the best structure, and if Derek makes more improvements in his legs, and he comes more conditioned, more matured, he's probably gonna win the Mr. Olympia, not Nick Walker, but he can probably go up to second, because I think he has a bigger chance of beating Hadi, if Hadi comes in off for some reason, like Big Remedy this year, or, you know, eventually when he starts to fade due to his age, but... Do I think Nick Walker can win the Mr. Olympia next year? I don't think that, no, not anymore. I used to think that he was gonna win this year's Mr. Olympia, but I saw what he looks like next to Derek and Hadi, and I don't think he can do that. I wouldn't complain if he was fourth behind Brandon Curry, I think that one was very close, so I think it would be a smarter decision for Nick to do the Arnold Classic as well, and on top of it all, I don't think it would hurt him, because last year he did so many shows and he made progress from show to show. And now with Matt Jansen in his corner, I'm pretty sure he can actually do that. So let's wait and see, maybe he changes his mind. But for now, he's not doing the Arnold Classic. And yeah, there was another interesting thing that Nick Walker said in his Q&A, somebody asked him about that podcast in which Brandon Curry said that Nick Walker is going to place 10th. Let's hear what Nick said about this. Uh -huh. No, not at all. Um, Brandon, Brandon's a great guy, great family man. I have nothing but the most upright respect for Brandon. No, 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 Brandon was just kidding. It was just a joke. 
I doubt, you know, we talked about it after the show. I, you know, I, I brought it up a little bit, and he, he doesn't really care. You know, he was just having fun. I'm pretty sure Brandon wasn't joking. I'm pretty sure he actually believed it when he said it. But that's what he said to Nick Walker because Nick actually asked him, why did you place me 10th in your prediction? I don't know, it was very funny to hear this, but this is gonna do it for this video, guys. Tell me in the comment section whatever your thoughts are. In case you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.